was a Lakshanik Geet in Raag Behag. It was a composition that was in the Raag Behag about Raag Behag. That is it described the Raag Behag in terms of its Aroha Vroha, Vadi Samvadi and the um, time that is assigned to the Raga. Now Lakshana uh, in general it means features, no, it means characteristics. So, uh, Raga Lakshana means the features of the Raga and uh, we, we can we standardly describe Raga Lakshana in terms of the Aroha, Varoha, Vadi, Samvadi, uh, Graha, Nyasa, all the aspects that we uh, covered in the previous videos whether the Swarasa Shuddha or uh, Komal um, and definitely the time of the day or night that uh, the Raga is uh, best supposed to be performed uh, in. Uh, it also includes typically some the uh, uh, thought or the parent scale. Now, we have not taken a, we have not uh, looked at this yet in which we, we will be doing that very soon. Um, so, this is Raga Lakshana. Uh, is, is a very standard way of describing any raga. And Lakshana Geet, one of which you heard just now in Bihag, uh, th these are a fascinating set of compositions uh, that incorporate the raga lakshanas in the same raga in which the composition is 
set. So we have a tradition of um, uh, describing the lakshanas of a rag not just in a composition but also in textual uh, in, in the textual tradition um, which is typically in uh, verse. So for example, we have this uh, lakshana of the same rag bihag uh, in verse, it is in Sanskrit. Vihanga iha giyate ma mriduhu anyati vrasvaro ridhau tyajati rohane sprishati cha avarohe puna tatha nigaditau gani ruchira vadi samvadino nishitha samaye sada shruti manoharam giyate. So, uh, this is from Raga Kalpa Drumankura. Uh, which is a um, 20th century text written in Sanskrit by one Appa Tulasi. And the, the Lakshana, the verse means this, right? Vihanga iha giyate. Vihaga is an uh, older name for the Raag Vihaga. Vihanga iha giyate ma mriduhu anya tevra svaru. So, ma is mridu, that is it is komal or it is in our, in our terminology we will say it is shuddha. That is, it is not the higher ma, it is the mridu ma. Anya tevra svaro. The others are, the rest of the svaras are tevra, that is, they are, uh, they are the, uh, the sharper note. Ridhau tyajati. Ri and dha are tyajati rohane. They are discarded in the arohana. Sprishati cha avarohe puna. And in the avaroha, it is only just touched. Sprishati. Tatha nigaditau gani ruchira vadi samvadi, you know, and gani are vadi and samvadi, and nishitha samaye sada. So, and it is sung at night. This is how there is a tradition of describing the raga lakshana in verse. This, uh, such, uh, such descriptions of raga, of ragas in terms of raga lakshana, uh, this kind of description has its limits. Now, even if we included every aspect of the raga that uh, we have discussed so far, right, in terms of ornament, what kind of ornaments have to be used, what are the imp important phrases, grahanyasa, etc. Basically, we create an extensive list of the features of the raga. Now, is that enough? Is that enough of a blueprint? for say a musician to perform it, even a seasoned musician, the answer is no. Um, there are simply too many subtle aspects of uh, ragas that uh, they simply defy exhaustive description. Even seasoned musicians would hesitate to uh, perform to try to perform a raga which they have not learnt from their teacher. Even though the raga might be performed by others, you might have heard it many times, but still if you haven't received the raga from your teacher, uh, you would be uh, unwilling to perform it. Um, and uh, see, this is not just a matter of uh, decorum or propriety. It is just that ragas have many areas of slippery territory. Not only what what is a raga, but what it is not. That is also uh, very important, which is where a master, a guru is uh, very important. You know, he or she will guide you there, um, offer you insights there. You see, we only have 12 swaras, right, and we have at least 100 or 150 very popularly widely performed ragas and many more ragas that are uh, less uh, less visible. So necessarily ragas will share tonal material. What the difference is? Where are the differences? The differences lie in these subtleties which uh, a master, a guru can guide us to through. See, senior uh, musicians and gurus of uh, Hindustani music are 
are addressed as pandits or ustad um, which which really means um, a repository of knowledge so gurus are a repository of knowledge of the ragas the subtleties of ragas now and even after receiving this knowledge from such a guru about ragas it's still a long journey as k saxena a philosopher and a well known writer on the aesthetics of hindustani music says this i quote raga is neither a mere arrangement of aroha and avroha or of vadi and samvadi no or a skeletal fixture to which the music must merely conform but a rich and integrated wholeness of implicit depth ruminous repose and vitality that is why our master musicians speak of a raga's personality so how does one absorb this personality it is a, a lifelong task discovering the identity of a raga its secrets you know its many beautiful nooks and crannies it is a lifelong journey for example um there is this lovely uh, astonishing insight into the rag shri that ustad bade gulam ali khan refers to he shares in an interview the link to the interview is given below but i'll play a sh- very short uh, clip from this interview where he refers to the the microtonal nuancing of the ga of the gandhar in ragshri now if you remember we i, I did mention that uh, ragshri has a slightly raised komal rishab the ri uh, has a microtonal nuancing which in in which the uh, it is slightly raised raised over the standard komal ri but here he is uh, that is well known it's it's a well known feature about rakshri but here the ustad is referring to the microtonal nuancing of the ga he says uh, he is speaking in hindi and uh, though some of you may not understand the language but the music needs no translation he says that the ra, the ga of shri it is shuddha gandhar that is what it is we say that rakshri has uh, shuddha gandhar but it is not the standard shuddha gandhar jaise sidhi raag mein gandhar ab to sahi lagta hai ma ba ni da da ne da ba ma ba da ba ga le sahi karte ma ushak ka ho sivar gandhar bhi pura nahi hai ma ba da ba ga le sahi bhi nahi ma ba ga ba na re pa re ga le sa ना इस तरफ गंधार कोमल हुआ ना उस तरफ गंधार तीवर हुआ सो वी परफॉर्म द वर्ल्ड ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस इनकॉर्पोरेट ऑल दिस माइक्रोटोनल लुवेंसिंग एंड समटाइम्स वी आर नॉट इवन अवेयर ऑफ देम एंड वी डिस्कवर देम एज वी जर्नी इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो हाउ इज रागा टॉट हाउ इज एनी रागा टॉट इट इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रोसेस लाइक like any other uh, uh art or craft in this country the traditional way of teaching this music was through a residence at the teacher's house and this is the well known gurukula vasa right yeah it generates the gurukula vasa which means you live with the guru's family and this generates the the guru shishya parampara the very another extremely <coughs> well known expression well known phenomenon so guru shishya parampara is the lineage of a student and teacher which is generated because of this relationship between student and teacher um 
the student living as part of the Guru's household. Now, what is the advantage um, of such a uh, such uh, an arrangement? You see, under the system, the student uh, lived with the teacher, and he observed every aspect of um, a musician's life. Most importantly, of course, how the guru practiced. So, by simply listening to the practice of the, the practice sessions of the guru, or how he taught other students, whether uh, more senior or less, everything went into the student's uh, education. It's part of the student's education. So much. Uh, is absorbed at the non-discursive level. Even when actual teaching happened uh, between the Guru and Shishya, the, the Guru taught, whenever the Guru taught the Shishya, it's uh, traditionally, it was not through um, uh, grammar telling, teaching the student, this is the grammar of the Raga. No, that is not the traditional way at all. The Guru would sing and the student had to listen and faithfully reproduce listening, listening, that is the main thing. So, as much as we say that uh, this tradition is oral, right, it is it is also important that we realize that it is oral, right. The Guru of course uh, gives oral instructions. Um, the, the student listens to the music itself. So, that is, that is the way traditionally that this music is taught, not by talking about ragas. In fine tuning the understanding of a raga, definitely Lakshana's features of the raga might be discussed, but at the preliminary level you do not talk about the raga, you, you sing it, you listen to it and then you reproduce it. Now, learning a raga is in many ways like learning a language. Now, how do you learn a new language? Uh, if you seek to approach through its grammar. Hmm? The progress is going to be tedious and uh, it is very likely that it will be a very long time before uh, you understand the nuances of the language, the way the language works enough to get all its aspects, especially you know, jokes and uh, poetry which rely so much upon uh, non-literal expression. Um, sometimes even defying grammar. You can't get all those if you are going to approach a language through its grammar. The best way to learn a language is to live amidst native speakers of the language. So, also the best way to learn a raga is simply to listen to it performed by those who have a mastery over it. So, also raga lakshanas are useful. Of course, they are important and uh, gurus do talk about them, um, but that is not the primary way of teaching music, teaching a rag, that is simply not the primary way. Um, because you see the truth is ultimately there is a certain deceptiveness about these rules, just as in language. The effective communication is not assured by uh, strict adherence to grammar you know, in language. And sometimes flouting a gram grammar rule can uh, really convey a subtle idea or a joke more effectively. So also the world of ragas is a world of lakshanas, definitely there is grammar, there is rule, there are rules, it is a shastra. But in the final analysis, it is the artistry that rules. Um, one learns the Shastra to ultimately transcend them and feel uh, free even while working within the Shastras. It is the, the centrality of the artistic aspect that makes the world of Rakas a dynamic one. It is a world that is in flux it is not unchanging. Ragas evolve, they change. Old ragas assume slightly, subtly newer ways. They even disappear. 
newer ragas appear and then uh, get established and so on. So if uh, the world of ragas was, was a kind of a tyranny of rules, then ragas would have atrophied. It wouldn't be a live, vibrant system that it is today. Now, how about notation in teaching raga? Notation, traditionally, it was simply not used. Uh, these days, it is used, uh, but at a very rudimentary level. For most ornaments, we don't have notation symbols. Um, and the notation only captures the skeleton of the melody or the composition. So, you know, if, if you were to be presented with the notation of a composition, for example, you would need to know the raga in order to be able to uh, uh, perform that composition based on the notation. Uh, you need to know the raga, you need to know its challenge, how it moves. So, notation is, is really used as a tool to remember as a reference. Um, it is never something on the basis of which one can actually make music. That is simply not possible and it is not uh, used that way. Currently, the most popular notation system that is uh, used is one devised by Pandit uh, Mishnu Narayan Bhatkandi. We will, uh, we will uh, discuss his work later in the course, but uh, this Notation system is simple and effective as a tool of reference. Melody, time and text of a composition are captured in a very skeletal uh, level in the system. Now, what is it like to perform a raga when there are so many rules? Where is the art? Where is the artistry? For a beginner, no doubt performing a raga is a daunting task. There are so many considerations. Um, you have to take care of so many things, tunefulness, grammar, right? And uh, what swaras are allowed, what are not allowed, not allowing shades of other ragas to come in and so on. It is quite difficult. Um, in fact, one Western musicologist um, has even commented that, you know, performing a raga is really uh, a task of keeping out other ragas. Uh, so, uh, so, let us say when you are uh, singing maybe rag marva, what you are doing is keeping out the other ragas, especially, you know, ragas like puriya and sohini with which it shares tonal material. Um, again, you see, for a beginner, this may be true, right? When you are setting out, you are very concerned that other ragas, uh, the shades of other ragas, you know, chaya, we say, none, it should not come in. It should not come in so as to destroy the raga that you are trying to perform. Um, that is at the beginning, at the beginner's level. But as you get seasoned, as you get maturity, uh, then you are. When you are performing a raga, you are performing the raga. You are not, uh, you know, obsessed with the idea that uh, you have to keep out other ragas. And that happens, that will happen. Um, there is, you know, such a thing as being with the raga, being absorbed in it, so that other ragas are thereby simply kept out. Um, so, when a master performs marva, he is performing Marva, not not Puriya. So, otherwise, you see, performing a Raga would be a petrifying task. You would be petrified that, you know, I will I'll, I'll make a mistake or some, some other Raga will come or I will hit a wrong note or something like that. Or maybe the ornament is wrong or the phrase is wrong. Um, that is not it. Performing a Raga is a joyous uh, experience once you have gained a certain level of maturity. Master, when a master performs a raga, she enters it and moves within it confidently and uh, cajoles it to show its beauties. And there is no petrification then. 
see, here you talk about lakshanas, right? raga lakshana is important, but there is also the other thing called lakshya. Right? So, we have lakshana, which uh, of course, you know, refers to the features of the raga, uh, the rules. We also have lakshya, which is the goal or outcome. So, there comes a stage always when, when you stop obsessing over the lakshanas and you are able to uh, focus on the lakshya, that is the outcome. That is the raga that you are performing to bring out that raga. So, a master uh, is in, in a way transcends lakshanas and uh, is guided by the lakshya, which is the goal here in this case is ultimately Ranjakatva or a certain kind of pleasure. You know, in fact, the very word Raga uh, is derives from the word, from the root Ranja, which means to uh, color, to please, uh, you know, to, to evoke passion. And so, that, that is the meaning of the word Raga. Um, so, Ultimately, the performance of Raga is about this Ranjakatva. But now other, other music also offers pleasure, right? Uh, but here in Raga Sangeet, you also have, uh, it is not just a sensual uh, pleasure, which any music will offer. So, it is very pleasing to the senses, right? Music is, all music is pleasing to the senses. But in the case of Raga uh, Sangeet, Raga music, there is the additional thing of, additional uh, level of contemplation. It, it is, uh, and also a cognition of uh, seeing that the Raga is, um, is brought out effectively. So, because it is so challenging, you know, it is improvised. First of all, there is a lot of improvisation in Hindustani music. So, that itself is a big challenge um, and it involves so many elements, right? you know, so many things that need to be taken care of. So, it is a feat when it all comes together and everything falls in place. There is a, a metaphor in one of, uh, in, a, in one of the works of uh, Abhinav Gupta, the 10th century uh, Kashmiri aesthetician, he, he says that in when the uh, elements of a theatre, of a theatrical presentation, you know, the, theatrical presentation has so many more elements than just a musical performance. Well, music itself is a part of uh, theatre. Um, so, when everything, you, know, you see there is this, the flaming torch, right, uh, and if you were to swirl it, um, there are various uh, positions that it occupies, but then when you, when it gets into a certain rhythm, you are not able to see the individual positions, but it all comes together in a, a circle of fire. That is uh, uh, that is how the elements of a performance should come together, so that they don't they are not visible, they are not experienced separately as various elements. It all falls in place. This is the, uh, the word for this is Alata Chakra, that is what he, uh, that is a metaphor he uses. And uh, this is really what we speak of as Ranga. Ranga is really just color, but um, it is a color that uh, that suffuses this, the mind, right? It is it's, um, it's color that is sheer joy, and this is or this is the goal of raga performance. But like in any other art, uh, you know, even the most technically perfect or brilliantly virtuosic uh, performance might sometimes simply uh, not have it. 
um, the creation of rang is not in anyone's hands. Uh, even after uh, a rigorous training under a master, uh, which may give you a lot of knowledge, you may be a very knowledgeable musician, but you may not be able to evoke the rang. That is a different deal altogether. But that is really what we all seek in this world. So, as I said, it has to do with uh, the feeling of everything falling in place and uh, coming together with the right amount, with the right proportion and its appropriateness above all. And uh, I mean, it, it's hard to put in words, but we know it when we experience it. And uh, certainly it cannot be taught by any means. Even the greatest teacher to the most ardent student, this is, this is not something that can be transmitted. Pandit Nikhil Banerjee was uh, one of the greatest musicians of the 20th century. He was a sitar uh, player and uh, he has a devout um, following even today. He says this, you know, that I am quoting him. This is from an interview. It is a belief, you know, it is a very controversial thing. In this 20th century, you may not accept it. But you cannot create this music. Something comes from maybe within or from outside. That creates it. If you say, now I am creating, then do it now. Each time, can you do it? No. You cannot do it each time. So here, you know, uh, Pandit Banerjee is really talking about the the elusiveness of this rang. It doesn't happen to everyone all the time. Now this is why in the tradition we talk of Raga Devata, that there are the gods of every Raga has a deity and that deity must grace the performance. We also talk of the Ranga Devata, the, the gods of the stage. So it is all, it's, all this just indicates that it is ultimately beyond the power of uh, mortals. It is not something that we can contrive and just will to happen. We also, tradition also speaks of Raga Bhava at a, at a um, less uh, divine level. Now, Dr. Mukund Lat, who was uh, a leading musicologist, philosopher, um, he says this, Raga Bhava is a term in use for the felt identity of a Raga. A Raga without Raga Bhava is believed to be only the shadow of the Raga. This Raga Bhava is something that transcends the music in its physical aspect and also its grammatical and presentational aspect. But ultimately that is the base, the mastering the grammar. That is absolutely indispensable. That is the base, the Shastra. Once you master the Shastra, then the artist might be able to take wings and fly. So the, this composition, um, this is a very, very well known Khayal composition. It was originally a Drupad composition, but um, it was then repurposed and we sing it in the Khayal tradition. This describes the Raga Vidya, the, the knowledge system that Raga, Ragas are. And he says, the composer says, Sura Sangata Raga Vidya Sangeeta Pramana Ko Jo Kantha Kara Dikhaye Vako Janiye Guni Gyani A person who has internalized, who has learnt the Raga Vidya and who, who has it in his Kantha, in his throat, that person you call Guni or Gyani. Now, guni is a is an expression that is uh, found very often in many compositions and it is one of those untranslatable words. Guna means quality. 
virtue. So a person who has um, talent, who, who, is, who has the uh, capacity to persevere and pursue this, uh, this vidya, this art, that person is a guni.